Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter Now is still a pretty recent thing in the grand scheme of Monster Hunter games. In fact, it's happening right now, especially with the way that the game bottlenecks progression for people that aren't in silly, dense city center areas, though it, it can take the average player a ton of time to actually get through some of the more specific story objectives, like slaying multiple of one specific monster that might just be nowhere nearby you, or even just if you reach an urgent quest that your gear is not quite up to snuff for. Hard farming gear can be quite the task to do. With that in mind, it becomes extremely important to actually pick the right gear to farm for you and what will make the most difference in any given situation. Recently, we talked about how there are certain skills being a bit underestimated in the game that actually make a bit of a big difference, but today we're going to get a lot more specific than that, talk about all of the good skills, and even more importantly than that, we'll talk about any skills that affect some weapons specifically more than others, and the ways that you would want to personalize your set as a result, letting us come up with generally the best armor for you to actually put effort and time into farming as a result based on the weapon that you're using. Using. I'm not in the crazy end game of the game itself quite yet, though I am almost at the end of the story, and while I'm not quite there, I do know all the skills on all the armor, I know how they all work, and at this point I have a number of years of time spent just trying to maximize Monster Hunter combat and builds to the highest degree possible, so I'd say I have a pretty good understanding of Monster Hunter math concepts, to the point of being able to tell you what's good and what's not just by being aware of how it functions. Starting off then, let's go with the Sword and Shield, the most default of the weapons, so to say, and it's worth mentioning that you should watch this section even if you're not playing Sword and Shield, as most of these skills will be what you want on the other weapons too, and I won't be explaining them in full detail the second time that I mention one specific skill. First and foremost, I would say that every non-ranged weapon in the game really wants a lock-on skill. It is just invaluable, and it lets you target certain monster body parts from off angles, like standing at a monster's side, but attacking it in the head for that sweet, sweet damage number, while sticking yourself in a safer standing position to dodge most of the basic attacks. Lock-on comes from Kulu Helmet early on. On, but the best armor piece that has this currently is the Rathian Gloves. These have lock-on on them, but they also have level 1 burst at base, level 2 burst at grade 6. Burst is an incredible skill in this game, specifically even compared to regular Monster Hunter games, as in regular Monster Hunter, it is a flat attack bonus, whereas in Monster Hunter now, it is a percentage-based bonus. So this skill, if you attack enough times in a row without stopping, will give you a 5% attack increase per rank, except the last rank, which is double, but we won't be getting quite that far. At grade 6, Again, this reaches two ranks of the skill, which means this armor piece gives you lock-on, which is hard to calculate but very strong, and burst level 2 for 10% damage increase that Sword and Shield can keep active the vast majority of the time, very, very strong as an individual armor piece. At this point, it's worth mentioning, the way that this game works as you get deeper and deeper in and fight the harder monsters, defensive skills just won't be worth it anymore. The timer becomes so tight on actually killing monsters that you need to get genuinely good at dodging attacks so that you can keep up the offensive as much as physically possible, and that means leaving defensive skills behind so you can get more offense in your build. As a result, while in earlier mid-game builds or for farming builds, you do absolutely want defense to conserve your healing. Things like Divine Blessing, for example, are incredible for that, and especially for farming monsters, you generally want to stick a Diablo's piece in there for one rank of part breaker, which will get you more materials per kill. In a proper endgame build, which is what today is about, you really do just want to go as hard on offense as you physically can, though. So keep that in mind as we go on, that's what I'll be focusing on. As a result, let's talk about helmets. If you're using an elemental weapon, which you absolutely should for Sword and Shield, Anjanath Helmet will be your helmet for fire weak monsters. It has fire attack level 2 and fire resistance level 1. The resistance is whatever, but element attack in this game as a skill is plus 50 element for the first couple of ranks, scaling notably upward at higher ranks, so it's genuinely very strong if you are element matching your targets. And two ranks is 100 fire attack. For non fire element builds, you instead probably want Baroth Helmet. This gives you defense boost 1. Again, defense is an arc goal, but it also gives you Offensive Guard level 1. The first rank of the skill is double value of the others, giving you 10% attack increase for 10 seconds after a well-timed guard, which we can definitely do with this weapon, not to mention we have a follow-up attack when guarding that does bonus damage if you can get it off. For your chest piece, that's where this gets interesting, for farming monsters below your pay grade, easy stuff. I recommend Anjanath chest for special boost 2, which is just straight up 15% increase to special skill damage, it's really solid. But for fighting monsters that you know you might come close to the timer on, the best choice is actually Great Jagras Chest for Rising Tide level 2. This skill is pretty special, as it increases your attack power at two different stages throughout a hunt. From what I can tell, this is plus 30 raw attack per rank of the skill at each of these stages. With 75 seconds left at the very start of the hunt, you're doing your base damage. At 50 seconds left, it will give you bonus 30 raw per skill rank. At 25 seconds left, you get another 30 per rank on top of that. If you want an example of this being silly, this is my first Diablos hunt. At 30 seconds left, it's at half health 
health. But just watch the damage ramp up as Rising Tide kicks in its second bonus, and I time my special skill with that bonus raw. That is just a nutty increase that essentially made me do the remaining half of this monster's health in 15 seconds, when I spent 45 seconds before that just doing the other 50%. So this skill is absolutely exceptional. Yes, you may be saying, what about Rathalos chest? But we'll talk about that in a moment. For your waste, you want to use Toby Kadachi if you are fighting a Thunder Weak monster for two ranks of Thunder attack. Like Iana, if you're against an Ice Weak monster, will give you two ranks of Ice attack. Otherwise, you want Rathian waste just for the one rank of extra burst and the 5% bonus raw that that will provide. Then for legs, you want Great Jagras against a Water Weak monster for two ranks of Water attack. Otherwise, it depends on your actual raw attack. If your weapon's raw attack is 1200 or lower, you want to use Anjanath legs. At grade six, they go up to two peak performance. And as I mentioned earlier, the trick to the end game is genuinely to avoid being hit at all costs. And so being at full health is sort of just a constant, especially as you will usually heal after you get hit anyways. As a result, two ranks of peak performance is basically just 60 raw as a bonus constantly. Once you reach 1200 raw though, you instead want to be using the Rathalos legs, which have some token fire resistance, but also one rank of weakness exploit. In this game, one rank of weakness exploit is 20% affinity when attacking a weak spot. Two ranks of this skill, though, is only 25% affinity. So the first rank is extremely valuable, but the second rank and further on isn't really that great at all. So having multiple ranks just isn't worth it. But that first rank of 20% affinity translates to about a 5% damage increase on average. And as a result, 1200 is the breaking point where 5% is worth the same amount as 60 flat raw from peak performance. Now let's move on to the longsword. And you may be unsurprised to find out that it is almost exactly the same as the skills and armor recommendations for sword and shield which is why I chose to share it second. The only real difference is that while we still want to use the Anjanath helmet for fire weapons, we otherwise want to go with Rathalos helmet for the two attack boost, which is sadly only worth 40 raw, but that is the best attack bonus that we can get out of a helmet slot for this weapon. For chest piece, it's the same as sword and shield, Anjanath chest for farming, great Jagras chest for more difficult fights, arms are again going to be Rathian, they're just too good for a melee weapon to give up, lock on is important and two ranks of burst is incredible, and longsword also attacks frequently enough to keep burst active quite easily. For waste is the same rules as sword and shield, thunder attack wants toby waste, ice attack wants legiana waste, otherwise you want rathian waste for the one rank of bonus burst, and then for legs it's the same as well, jagras for water element, otherwise anjadath if your weapon has 1200 raw or less, rathalos if it has more than that. For great sword I've got a couple of options for you, if you are using multiple different weapons and want a similar setup to the others, with only some slight variants you'll be using the rathalos helmet for the two attack boost and the one fire attack is nice too if you happen to be using a fire great sword, for chest it's the same rules as the other weapons, Antonath chest for farming, Great Jagras chest for hard stuff. For your arms, you want Rathian, just like all the other melee weapons, Lock-On is invaluable, and having the game auto-target a true charge to hit the weak spot is insanely better than hitting a gray number with a true charge. And then while Greatsword is worse at activating Burst, Burst is still very good when it does activate anyways. For your waist, it's Toby Kadachi for Thunder Attack, Legiana for Ice Attack, but for Greatsword, your non-element choice is going to be Antonath waste instead of Rathian, as Special Boost Rank 1 for 10% bonus special skill damage has way more value for this weapon than Burst does. And it's worth noting, like with Weakness Exploit, Rank 1 of Special Boost is way more value than most of the remaining ranks, so one rank is great, especially if you pair it with Rising Tide and use your special skill in the last 25 seconds of a hunt. Then for your legs, you have the exact same choice as the others too, Jagras legs for Water Element, otherwise if your raw attack is 1200 or lower, go with Anjanath legs for 2 peak performance and the raw boost that that gives. If your raw is 1200 or higher, go with Rath Rathalos legs for the one rank of weakness exploit. If you're willing to specialize a bit more though, I've got a set that works both for greatsword and for hammer, specifically if you want to focus on doing level three charge attacks with a hammer too. This set is, well, focus based. You can get five ranks of focus in Monster Hunter now, which is a massive 30% increase to attack charge speed, which could be argued as massive both for survivability and for damage, as 30% faster charges is probably on average close to about 20% damage increase across a whole hunt, maybe even 25-ish. To do this then, you need the Pookie Pookie Helmet for one rank of focus and two health boost at higher grades as well, the Anjanath Chest for special boost two when farming weaker enemies, or again the Great Jagras Chest for longer timer fights. For your gloves, you want Black Diablos actually, which will take quite a bit to get to, yes, but when you do, you get one rank of resentment and one rank of focus as well, resentment being a 10% raw attack increase for 15 seconds after you are hit by an attack. We don't want to get hit by attacks, of course, 
but if you do, that's a pretty nice reward. For the Royce, then you want Rathalos for the one focus, and it also happens to have a fire attack on it too, and then for legs, you want Juratotus for two focus once you get it to grade six, as well as Last Stand, which is just a defense increase at low health. This build puts all of its eggs in a focus-shaped basket, but it does give you a very different experience to how the game feels for these two weapons without focus involved, and one that is just definitely an alternate route to high damage. Other than that, if you again play multiple weapons and want to set a bit closer to the rest of the weapons for Hammer, it's Rathalos Helmet, mainly for attack boost, Anjanath Chest while farming, Great Jagras for the difficult fights, Rathian Arms are just too valuable to ever give up for a melee weapon, then it's Toby Waste for Thunder Damage, Legiana for Ice, otherwise you want Anjanath Waste for the one rank of special boost as it's worth more than Burst for Hammer as well. For Legs, again it'll be Jagras for Water Attack, Anjanath if your raw attack is 1200 or lower, or Rathalos if your raw attack is higher than that. That said, let's talk about the bow. Helmet is going to be similar to the others, but is a bit more element leaning so you definitely want Want to specifically use Anjanath Helm if you're using a fire weapon, otherwise Rathalos Helmet is going to be your winner. For chest, it is the same once again, Anjanath chest for farming, great Jagras chest for difficult hunts. For arms, we have a slight variation here, bow doesn't need lock on, so water when you're a weak monster while using a water weapon, you should instead be using Juratotus arms for two water attack, and you should absolutely use Anjanath arms for fire attack as well, as combined with the helmet, that would give you four fire attack for a whopping 350 element increase, otherwise you still want to use Rathian arms arms, as regardless of lock-on, two ranks of burst still works really well with the bow. For your waist, you want Toby Kadachi for thunder attack, Legiana for ice attack, Rathalos for fire actually here, as one rank of focus is at least something on bow, but more importantly that would give you the fifth rank of fire attack in the fire attack version for a 500 bonus total. Otherwise you want Rathian waist just for that other level of burst. Then for legs, this is the same as the other weapons too. For water attack boosting, you want Jagras legs, otherwise it'll be Anjanath legs if your raw attack is 1200 or less, Rathalos legs if it is higher than that. Finally then we have the Light Bogum, which is a weapon with a touch more nuance than the others, just because it has a couple of skills in the game that exist purely for this weapon that affect none of the others. For helmet on this weapon, if you're looking for fire damage, Antonath is still going to be your best choice. Otherwise, you actually want Toby Kadachi helmet for this weapon, which will shake things up. One rank of reload speed is decent, as you can't always get your auto reload, and in those moments, reload speed directly translates to more damage as you get through the animation faster. But this helmet also gets Artful Dodger level one, which increases the window for perfect evade. For most weapons, this is definitely decent, but I find it especially good for light bowgun, as a main mechanic of the weapon is that a perfect dodge refills your current ammo type, so if you want to stick on one specific ammo type, rather than switching because that one is stronger, you'll be doing your best to perfect dodge every attack anyways, and increasing that window is incredibly valuable as a result. For chest piece on light bowgun then, it is the same as the other weapons once again, Anjanath chest if you're going to be farming, great Jagras chest if you're fighting something particularly difficult you expect to use most of the timer against. For gloves, you want Juratotus for water element matching, Anjanath for fire element matching, otherwise you have two options that I think is really dependent on the specific bowgun you're using at that moment, so you'll have to work it out for yourself. But Rathian for burst is still extremely good with light bowgun. You are firing constantly, so this does activate frequently, or the other choice being Legiana arms for two reload speed, and the big difference that makes when you aren't able to pull off consistent perfect evades. For waste, it'll be the same as bow, Toby for thunder, Legiana for ice, otherwise you want Rathian for that one cheeky rank of burst. For legs, it is once again the same as all the other weapons, Jagras for water element matching, Anjanath if your weapon has 1200 raw or lower, Rathalos if it is higher than that. And then that's it really everyone. The best offensive sets for each weapon in various situations. Again, the point of this is to help you craft the thing that you'll get the most use out of once you have mastered dodging. As once again, once you get to the proper end game with monsters that have purple stars above their head, if you are not dodging, you will not succeed anyways. The timers just get way too tight to be able to even think about defensive skills. You have to master dodging. As I mentioned though, for farming, there's absolutely nothing wrong with defensive skills to preserve your potions, and you should absolutely keep around at least one Diablos armor piece with part breaker 2, as part breaks means that more materials are going to be dropping, which means faster farming. Other than that, I firmly believe that the 15 armor sets currently in the game, of all of them that we have, if we include the Black Diablos as well, these are the best offensive sets that you can make for each of the various weapon types. I hope you've enjoyed this, and hopefully it helps you out in your continued journey hunting these dastardly beasts outside in the real world. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay Stay sweet.
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye